right. <laughs> I see a few of you guys are in there fighting for uh, the first comment. I like to see that. And uh, yes, Tracy, thank you for reminding them to hit that like button. That is very helpful. So yeah, we have, my sister got married. Um, so we'll be discussing some Amish weddings. But uh, first, a few updates. Took another cold plunge in the ice box this morning, the deep freeze. It was fun. My Amish brother went in as well. He didn't have a choice. I told him to bring his swimming trunks and a towel. And he had no idea. He thought maybe we were getting in a river. Well, surprise to him, we got into 38 degree uh, temp water and he kind of enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, so still trying to stick with the carnivore as much as possible. That did not go over well at the Amish wedding yesterday, but for the most part, I'm sticking with it. Um, except for garden veggies. Uh, these tomatoes right here are Brickley tie-dye heirloom ones. They're ripe when they're green, orangish, kind of weird color. There we go. But these things are fantastic. For heirloom, sometimes heirloom doesn't taste as good because they're not genetically modified, right? Genetically modifying plants, uh, they, they put take the best of a few plants and put the, and make one plant out of it, making super good tomatoes or whatever. But these are really good sandwich tomatoes. Brickly tie dyes. You guys are interested in that. And the seed, seeds are good to plant again. So a little update on that. I'm also trying to do OMAD, one meal a day, um, sort of. So I only really eat a meal in the evening, of course, <laughs> not including yesterday, but I uh, only eat a meal in the evening. But in the morning, just to get by, I'll drink like a latte made with heavy whipping cream. And then throughout the day, if I have to, I will eat some fat bombs, which is just caramelized butter, I think. I don't know if they're good. You melt butter down. It's delicious. And uh, maybe, or, or like a slice or two of bacon. But, yeah. Um, so, how's it going, Karen? Karen is a uh, supporter, a member of the channel. Uh, once again, I can't see your little icon there. I forgot what the little little icons were. <laughs> I'll have to go look at that again. Um, I made this live stream just in time. I was uploading pictures, and it was not going as planned. It took a while. It took about a half hour. So, oh, I was here three minutes prior. I didn't know there was a contest. Oh, <laughs> I guess there is. I don't know. So, I, so I'm going to start that intro. Someday I might have a new intro, but for now you get that one. Just a, what, two and a half minute video intro. And uh, yeah, I'll let you guys file in. Gives you guys something to do. And, and it gives me enough time to share on other platforms that I'm live. But yeah, let's, uh, how's it going Shiloh? Haven't seen you, didn't see you last week. How are you? And uh, Annie, how are you? Glad to see you again. It's Annie from New Brunswick. Yep, Canadian, our Canadian friends up there. How's the wheat there? 84, oh, how's the weather there? 84 here in Kentucky. You know what? I don't know what the temperature is. It was a little chilly this morning, when, especially when I got out of that deep freeze. It took me a while to warm up. I didn't bring a sweatshirt. I should have. I think it was like 50 degrees this morning when I woke up at 5. Um, but it's it's warmer today. The sun's shining. It's probably close to 80. Happy chicken. Oh, dude, you have to make sure they are ripe. Then pick at night after a hot day without watering. Really? That is very interesting. I have never heard of that. So, pick at night after a hot day without watering. Hmm. I'll have to try that. So, Lulu Davis, welcome to... Uh, to the channel, first time watching, shout out to you. Um, yeah, so we have, this is probably, we have more visuals in this live stream. Um, I don't know if you guys have saw my little short that I put up there, or shorter video with the chair, the odd looking chair. There's a story behind that, we'll get into that. And Shadow's been out on the lake, that sounds like fun. Uh, yeah, that sounds like fun. 50 is perfect here, 
Huh. 50 is perfect. Are you West Coast or East Coast? I forget. Hang on just a second. My wife's coming in. Let me unlock that. Are you going live? I'm live. Can I come in with the dogs now? Yep. Oh, okay. the dogs. They're get the sh Watch the me. camera's going to shake. Watch the camera. Come on, guys. So I think it concentrates the sugar. That's very interesting. I, I bet you might be right. Tripper, he can stay out here. They can stay out here okay. if they want. Bear. Um, Bear's going to stay. He's okay, fine. Well, I don't know. As long as he doesn't huff and puff. Come his on, Bear. breathing might be too loud. Bear. As long as his breathing is not louder than mine. Go. Go, buddy. <laughs> You're burnt, Shiloh, for being on the lake, I bet. That sun seems like it double doubles up on you on lakes. So just plain mom, I watch every video. I am kind of a silent Oh, well, hey, just plain mom, that's fine. I am a silent watcher on many channels. Um, it's good to have you here. Um, yeah, it's good to have you here. So the wedding, let's get started with the wedding. So my sister got married. Um, she was a little older, I don't know, mid to mid 20s later 20s which is kind of older for amish girls um and her husband was 30 which is kind of older for uh, amish guys to get married but so be it they just hadn't met and uh they met <laughs> they met in they took two trips to montana together and uh she was crushing on him because she told me and then on the second trip on the way home they brought the train home he, uh, she was sitting in the sightseeing car on the Amtrak and he, um, approached her there and asked her on their first date and that was last year. So now they're married, but, uh, uh literally asked, how did my brother like it? Yeah. He rather enjoyed it. He was, it took his breath. It takes your breath away. <laughs> so I don't know if he'll be doing it again, um, but. I think he kind of enjoyed it. He, he knows it did stuff to his body. So it, does, it definitely does stuff to his body. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, so we'll see if he does it next Saturday or not. But, uh, so yeah, Shiloh asks, how's Miranda? She is good. She's at camp, at a Christian camp this weekend. She skated out of the wedding a little early. She, I can't believe we didn't get a picture. I might have had a picture of her. Oh. She was dressed Amish with the head covering and everything. And you know what? She just fits right in. She just, people, people approach her and talk Amish to her. And she's like, I don't know what you're saying. But yeah, she just, she looks like she's one of them. <laughs> just running around there with a dress and a head covering. You know, they got little flowers or something to put up there. Uh, so yeah, anyway. So my brother stayed in for two minutes. And yes, he, I only stayed in for three minutes this time. I could have stayed longer, but I was like, eh. Um, he'll hear about that in the future because he didn't stay in four minutes like I did the first time. Uh, but <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he did enjoy it. He was thinking, uh, yeah, man, if it's hotter, I, I, I'd be okay with going in again. Uh, it was funny. It was, it's funny watching people go in because it really takes your breath away. Like it, it, you can't help it. Like you, your legs go in. Um, and it's fine, it's cold, but then you just sit in there. It just, it takes your breath away. And you, you're, I think that's why time flies. Because you're just <sighs> trying to breathe and trying to calm yourself down. And we were talking about that a little bit this morning. In cold water, I was like, well, so it's kind of weird. You can really handle falling into an icy lake um, and survive it really easily. And they were like, well, but it's, it's getting yourself under control. Here you know you're going in. And you, you control yourself, your breathing and everything like that. If you accidentally fall into an icy lake, you're most likely to panic. Um, but if you can get yourself under control, stay cool, definitely, definitely survive, no problem. So, Alexander, yes, Alexander, I don't know how to pronounce you, the rest of your name, but uh, thank you for the question. Yeah, it's, it is okay for Amish to ride the train. They can ride the train, they're not supposed to fly. Uh, the only exception to flying is if there's an emergency. Um, so if, if they were vacationing somewhere and a family member died or something, they would be they would be allowed to fly home. That is our community. I can't speak for communities outside of northern Indiana or Holmes County, Ohio. Once again, Holmes County, Ohio and northern Indiana are very similar. 
So Karen Tyler competition, yeah, competition. We'll, we're going to get into that a little bit more later. That the competition, the chair, the weird looking chair, has something to do with that. So Happy Chicken asks, is it possible to have an Amish wedding if you are no longer Amish, like the traditions, the Bible reading, and the things? Yeah, if you want to. I mean, the, you know, I think not Amish weddings, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, you could have a Amish wedding. I, I, I think they're better. <laughs> I, I think they last all day. Um, I would say they're better. Uh, so cold, cold dipping is good for your metabolism. Yeah, I might end up getting a deep freeze and putting it back here at the house. So, Hey, hello, Jamie Dent. Hey, Jamie. Hello, CJ from Reno, Nevada. Yep. I missed the chair. Yeah, you'll have to go back and watch. I'll have pictures of it. So, let, yeah, let's get into the wedding. Uh, and then I'm going to answer questions later. But uh, I'm going to show you guys a video of... I just... I snuck... Snuck. I... I got in there and I got some video of the cook wagons uh, and the cooler and the bench wagons that they use. So back in the day, back when my parent, my mom got married, she had some older brothers, but when my mom got married, uh, what they did was what was normal. They would, they would run around the neighborhood and they would collect all the stoves, the, the, the propane stoves. They would bring them all to the location of the wedding. They would set them up. You know, they would they would gather around from the other neighbors, refrigerator, whatever they had to have to, to make this feast happen because weddings are huge. So thirteen hundred plates were set yesterday at my sister's wedding. It's not always thirteen hundred. Like my brother when he got married, they were at eight hundred. So but usually it's eight hundred to thirteen hundred. So and, and a lot of people were there. Not not thirteen hundred guests, but thirteen hundred place settings. So the there's a noon meal so they have a church service where they get married there's a noon meal and then they're the 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 cook have eaten before they go to the church to the church service the cook and the table waiters and they, they just eat on the fly like a buffet style but yeah the noon meal there's place settings where everybody eats family style at four o'clock the cook sit down and eat family style 5 30 all the friends and family that weren't invited earlier uh, and the ones who stay all day sit down and eat family style and then seven o'clock the family and the youth <laughs> eat at family style so tons of food tons of you know this is all yeah tons of help tons of um tons of work going on but 1300 place settings and I, it was probably close. It was probably a good 11, 1200 plates that were served yesterday. Um, but so it, so when my mom got married or, you know, when people were getting married back then, they would gather all the stoves up. They would gather whatever to, stuff they needed from the neighborhood, set everything up and then feed everybody. And then they would have to, after the wedding, they would have to take everything back. Uh, in in that wedding, my, my mom's wedding, my uncle started thinking. He was He's kind of an entrepreneur. But he was thinking, you know, if you build a trailer with a bunch of stoves in it, you could probably rent it out to the weddings and it'd be way more convenient <laughs> than unhooking everybody's stove, bringing it down to the, the location, and then hooking it back up and to just make some meals. So, yep, cook a wagon, food truck. Uh, so let me... Let me start this video and I'll just kind of maybe walk you through it. I think, um, let's turn off this sound. Hopefully I know what I'm doing uh, here. So, right here. Yep. Close that out and here we go. So that's the cook wagon. It's a pretty long trailer. Joyful occasions is the people who own it. Look at all that corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup, Caro. Amish like their comfort foods, <laughs> sugars. But yeah, so you can see all the stoves. It has slide outs. The slide, the, they slide out. There's kitchen sinks. Um, and then, yeah, what is it? Six stoves in there. And then all the pots and pans come with it. Some shelving was in there that they'll use, the table waiters will use for uh, setting up. There's, there's shelving it. The, the end of each table that the table's waiters use. 
And you don't really have bridesmaids and bridegrooms. You have table waiters. And then you have what, I don't know, translated beside sitters. So six people sit at the, the bridal table. Is that what you call it? So that's the, that ramp folds down so that on the day of the wedding, you can walk up and down it. This, this was taken a few days before the wedding. And then this is the cooler. Just kind of typical, just a trailer with a cooler. And then there's a freezer box in the back. But this all gets filled with food. Lots of coo whip. <laughs> um, this is the bench wagon. So this is actually what they use for church, setting up benches. All the benches are stored in there, hauled from house to house. Very quality made wooden benches. Uh, they get put up and torn down a lot, a lot. So that is, yep, that's the bench wagon they use to haul around. So this is actually a few days before the wedding. They set the tables a few days before, um, and then they just cover them. So everything's set up, the cups, the plates, everything's set up, ready for the first meal, the noon meal. And then back here, that's where the bridal table table's going to be. The groom was in the process of building it. I do have a picture of it finished. I couldn't take video on the day of the wedding. For obvious reasons, there's people around. Um, I had to be, uh, but my sister did ask me to take pictures for her. So I did go in there with a camera and... We did, I did take some pictures. So back in this area, there, there'd be more tables set up to serve or to fill the, the dishes with food. And that is a menu. <laughs> so yeah, um, I don't know if I have a picture of that. I don't know if you guys saw that. Let me, I can't skip ahead. Oh, sorry guys, we won't watch it again. But so there was a list on that, that shelving, there was a list and that, that was the, the, the name of the couple, the, the, the table waiters always come male, female, typically, usually, uh, unless they have a bunch of extra of males. Um, they might put two guys together, but that seldom really happens. And then they have a list of what order the items are supposed to be sent. And what they'll do is they'll, uh, once um, the prayer has been said, so the bishop, once everybody's seated, the bishop will you know call for a silent prayer. And then once that's done, uh, Somebody will start singing some hymns. In, in this community, it's hymns in English, not in German. There might be a few German ones. But yeah, while the hymns are being sung, the table waiters will grab their dishes, their empty bowls, and they'll go over and have it filled. The cooks will be filling their bowls of hot food. And then once all their, their shelf is filled with hot food, they'll start sending it down family style. Uh, the numbers on the paper for on the bench wagon truck oh so the numbers yeah so the numbers that little plaque on the door that is the length of benches and where they go so there's um five four five there's six seven eight nine ten twelve and fourteen foot benches i believe i just so you know because they're, they have church and houses so they need all different sizes of benches to make it work in houses or in the shops or barns, wherever they are. So then that list is just a, a, a diagram, I guess, of where the benches belong, what size bench belongs where. Uh, and very, very convenient, you know, and, and it's crazy. Like this was all, so Monday morning, I believe, my family, I wasn't there, but the rest of my family showed up, set up all the tables, all the benches were set up. And, uh, and then the wedding like the, 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 there's one, two, three, four, four meals served, what dishes washed between every meal. And then by an hour and a half, two hours after the wedding was over, which like at 830, I think by 10, you know what? So I think everybody was done filing out of there by eight, 830. And by 10 o'clock that uh, tent that the wedding was in was empty. All, all the tables had been picked up and put in a trailer. All the benches had been picked up, put in the bench wagon. All the benches in the in the shop. Everything, the dishes were all washed. Everything was put away by 10 o'clock. So like an hour and a half after. I think it was like an hour and a half, maybe maybe two hours. Um, it's it's insane. So it's insane. Just the people just help. <laughs> they, they just help. Yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, so where were we? So that was a bench wagon. Oh yeah. So let me show you. Um, and I need to get to questions. So 
let me show you here it's the pictures that I took. And I'm, I apologize, they're kind of dark. So there's the flowers, the bouquets. Those are real flowers. Uh, that is something my sister and the group, the bride and groom pay for themselves. Uh, I, I apologize for them being dark. I haven't had time to edit the video, uh, the pictures. There's Lacey. So Lacey is the dog, the farm, the farm dog. She's been through quite a bit this week. I think she was, th these past two weeks, she's been through quite a bit. So for, for any of you guys who were Amish, <laughs> um, getting ready for a wedding is no small thing. The whole hot place needs to be picked up and cleaned up and, you know, we recited the garden shed so it looks good for the wedding and new mulch is brought. It just, yeah, tons of work. Well, last week, my grandma also passed away. And if you know about Amish funerals, it's a three-day affair. Neighbors are coming, um, helping clean up, getting ready for a funeral, ready for the viewing, all that stuff. Family is there. So for that dog, for the past two weeks, it's constant people coming and going, <laughs> you know, helping. People helping, people, you know, viewings and weddings, just constantly people. And, yeah, I think she was wore out, stressed out. She wasn't, yeah, she's not her normal self, but wasn't. So hopefully she can go back to normal now. My dad, he was, he's tired. My parents are tired too. It's, it was, having a funeral when you're getting ready for a wedding isn't ideal. Obviously that is not something that is in our control. But everything planned out good. Um, my dad probably took a nice long nap today. My mom as well. Stress is over for him. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, that was Lacey taking a nap today. You know, once again, there's people there today just, helping clean up and getting my sister moved out of there um so so there is so that is the uh, bridal area that my brother-in-law now brother-in-law was building and that's where my sister and my brother-in-law sat all day for the meals and then uh, the two couple side sitters i don't know what else you would call them be like best man and best 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 man and best woman best man and maid of honor but they have partners it's always done in partners so i see that yeah i don't blame lacy <laughs> i know she, kids everywhere you know probably getting picked on and there is it's really dark but that is their place settings for um the bridal table they get special food so they had we had ham in the evening Everybody had ham, except for them. They got steaks grilled specially for them, shrimp. They get to drink a little bit of wine. Nobody else does that. Uh, doesn't get it. So really dark there, but you can see the, the setup. That was just, there was more tables behind the camera at that point. Um, man, I wish it was a little bit lighter there. It's kind of dark. So let me, there's the wedding cake. Very plain, very simple. Not that it has to be. That was just my sister's choice. So, yeah, they do have wedding cakes. I don't know how many. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know. Like, I know it's kind of hard to see, but let me know what you guys think. You know, those were, uh, the generator was running the whole time to run the cook wagons and all the cook wagons are run off of gener generators and uh, propane. Those were lights were brighter those lights were brighter the whatever you the i don't know the little string lights um it looked really good in there uh yeah let me know if it's it seems like an amish wedding or if it seems like more like a non-amish wedding uh, i know there's a lot of communities that would not go this far there, there was there was a couple families from hillsboro wisconsin there and I'm guessing they were kind of shocked at how worldly these Amish are down here. I'm, I'm not shocked. I mean, they probably know, but they were probably like, wow, we're, they're going off the deep end in this community. So, yep. Like, tell me about the style choices. Is, is my sister up to date or, <laughs> or is she out of date? I mean, is she, is she getting behind on the styles? There's a dog again. Let me see if I get them all. Yeah. Yeah, I think it looked very pretty. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm a guy, so I don't really, 
Um, but yeah, uh, I see who pays for the wedding. So my parents pay for all the food and everything that needs to be done around there, the cook wagons and all that stuff. Um, the, the groom and the bride, they pay for like the table and chairs that are set up, the night, the, the display they have, whatever, the bridal area. Uh, there's always that setup where the married couple's sitting. That's all paid for by the bride and groom. The flowers are paid for by, by the bride and groom. All of the helpers get gifts. So you have all the cook. I think there's like 40, 50 cook usually. They always, always go home with a gift for helping. Um, the, all the table waiters, usually there's 12 couples or so. They go home with a gift for helping i mean they're, they're the ones serving and the cooks you know they're all working um the then there's coffee servers we'll go home with a gift and all the little kids and usually nieces and nephews uh, hand out pens or you know with the couple's name on it and pass around the guest book and all that stuff they all go home with a gift and yeah usually usually like the sisters um so my wife got sent home with one of those bouquets bouquets that was on the table so usually yeah so they they end up paying i mean they, they end up spending quite a bit of money too but yeah my dad he says it was over 10 i think in the wedding total i don't know if i'm supposed to share that or not but food alone was insane <laughs> i mean you can imagine buying ham ham and then we had uh, ham for dinner uh, and then we had poor man's steak which is not, it, it, was, it was delicious. Like I would have picked that over the ham. It was smoked as well. So it's kind of like a meatloaf, but smoked. It was delicious. Um, sorry, Karen English, you'll have to <laughs> you go back and watch it. But yeah, so yeah, uh, hopefully that wasn't too quick for you guys. If you guys want to see more pictures, just let me know. I might back up here and grab some of the questions while we're at it. Um... Let me see here. Uh, is it okay for the Amish um, competition? Yep, it works. Is it possible to have an Amish wedding? I think I answered that one. Sorry, just catching up here. Cold dipping. Yep, we did that. We were just talking about. Grab my tablet. I don't know if I can watch two at the same time. LOL. Oh, uh, you watching something else as well? <laughs> Cook wagon, food truck. Yeah. So there, here we start. You have to feed everyone who pays for this. Yeah. So my dad does. Yeah. Everyone, everybody gets fed. My dad and my parents pay for it. Um, TJ, wait, one cook. Wow. No, not just one cook. There's like 40, 50 of them. And they have plenty of, uh, you know, plenty of help. So it was funny. It used to be, it, it was still going on when I was a kid. And I think my brother was saying he read about it in the Reminis magazine. So it used to just not, not just be Amish weddings. But uh, if you didn't get invited, if you knew the couple and didn't get invited, and you were in Rumspringa, so a party or a rebel, right? You didn't get invited. You would, they would go what they call belling. <laughs> it's probably an Amish word. They would take huge saw blades, like huge saw blades out of sawmills or whatever. They would save them. They would have a stand fixed up, it's like a tripod or whatever, where the saw blade would sit on top and just dangle. And then they would get their buddies drinking, um, sometimes wearing masks and stuff. And they would show up at the, the wedding, figure out where, what corner or what section um, the bride and groom are sitting. This is in, in the evening when all the youth are eating. They would set up their saw blade outside and they would just take hammers and just bang, 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 bang. It's really loud. Sometimes they would bring chainsaws with the bar taken off, you know, and be revving it. Um, and, and it would, the, the, usually the homeowner, like it'd be my dad in this case, he would uh, let him go for a little bit and then he would go out and tell him to come in. Uh, and then they would get to, you know, come in and get your candy bar. So they would come in and <laughs> shake hands with the bride and groom and be given a candy bar. Because after every meal is served, uh, a bowl goes around with candy bars in it. Yeah. Enough unhealthy food, right, already with the food and dessert. And then they pass candy bars around. 
I remember these Bella <laughs> as little boys. We were always scared of them because we would, you know, this is, we were little kids and we were like, whoa, these guys are drinking and they're dressed non Amish and they have cool cars and they're just, you know, oh, can't wait to be like them. And we'd get, try to sneak up close to them and they'd be like, get out of here. Get out of here. We'll pull your pants off, you know. We'll just, we'll pull your pants off was there. Today, Hosea, <laughs> scared the daylights out of us because, you know, who wants to be walking around a wedding in their underwear? Uh, <laughs> I don't, now it sounds a little creepy when you threaten to pull some kid's pants off. Uh, anyway, memories. But, uh, but yeah, so what I'm getting at is, uh, it was funny because it doesn't really, that doesn't happen anymore. I don't know why. But uh, all of a sudden, we hear some banging and clashing <laughs> behind the couple that was getting married, my sister. And uh, come to find out, the cook were doing it. So they'd grabbed a bunch of pots and pans and were back there <laughs> banging on them. <laughs> I thought that was kind of clever. Um, I don't know whose idea that was, but it was, it was kind of hilarious. So anyway, yeah, back on to... Amish work hard enough to burn off their comfort foods, lol. Some of them. Around here, they're... The old ones aren't. They're getting heavy. So our numbers on the... Okay, let's... They go all out. Yeah, they do go all out. It's an all-day affair. It's a... It is... Um, it is an all-day shindig. So it starts... The couple is over at the church area at like 8 in the morning. And then by the time everybody leaves, it's eight. It's 9 o'clock. They're still cleaning up at that time, but yeah, eight to, by the time they get to go to bed is probably midnight, 11 to, 11 to midnight. It's a long day. They're usually tired. Um, what was on the menu? So yeah, for lunch, uh, there's a, so usually just the meat changes, maybe dessert, but for lunch, you know, we had the poor man's steak, delicious, the mashed potatoes, dressing, noodles, gravy. A salad, delicious, like this was a kind of a, some kind, some kind of coleslaw salad. Really good. Um, bread, homemade bread with uh, homemade jelly. So good. And that's the main meal, right? You get seconds. I wish you guys could experience an Amish wedding. My, my wife <laughs> suffers every time. <laughs> uh, you got to know how to control yourself. The food comes around, it all looks good. You know, I've shared somebody else's experience with this where he had to stop at a random house on the way home. But, and they, and Amish people eat fast. So you fill your plate, you eat, seconds come around, you want more, you eat, you're full, dessert comes around. Dessert was three different kinds of pies. Um, there's a pudding. And then there's also the, one of my favorites is it's like a cottage. I don't know, you guys know probably know what it's called, but it's cottage cheese with, cream cheese, some pineapple, and a couple cherries on top. And that, that's one of my favorites, really good. Uh, that's usually a wedding dessert. Sometimes they have fruit. They didn't today, yesterday they didn't have fruit for some reason, not sure. Yeah, so the desserts, and then, then the same is served for dinner, except the meat usually changes. So we had ham instead of poor man's steak. Well, I did, I did. I tried to stay conservative, but I didn't <laughs> with the carnivore diet. So I had, I had a little bit of mashed potatoes. I skipped on the dressing and the bread. I had some of the salad, the coleslaw salad, whatever that was, because uh, it was good. But then the pecan pie came, and I just I couldn't say no. So I had some pecan pie twice that day. Mm. It was delicious, just so full of sugar. So I've never tried Amish food yet. Yep, it's good stuff. Um, you know, let me. So, who pays for the wedding? Answer to that, Alexander. Can everyone still speak German? Most people can sp uh, speak Pen Pennsylvania Dutch. They don't actually speak German, although they read out of the German Bible. So they sing in German. They read the Bible in German, for the most part. Um, but that's my wife texting me for. Um, so I have to. Um, oh, because I, I had an upcoming one. Yeah, I kind of messed up on the live stream. Anyway, so, yeah, but everybody speaks in Pennsylvania Dutch. And there are non-Amish people there. 
co-workers or friends of the family, you know, there's a few of us who left the Amish. We still get invited. Um, I still need to get to the chair thing. How long have we been going? 38 minutes already. Amish food is so good. Yep, it is so good. Four meals for everyone. Well, we only ate two, but um, this is enough for four. So, yeah, Annie, I, yeah, Amish food is delicious. It is very delicious, just not healthy. Everything's so beautiful. It is people, yep. All looks pretty. Oh, uh, I answered that. So Alexander asked, so the, so the bride and groom get to drink alcohol, but nobody else. Well, yeah, so typically in on the bridal table, they might, I don't know if it was alcohol, I shouldn't say that. My sister and her husband uh, are a little bit more conservative than the rest of her family. Uh, but I remember when I was with my brother who got married and we had wine. And a lot of times they'll, they'll drink a little bit of wine and Amish are fine with that. Um. I did have a beer myself, so the youth show up. They're usually drinking. Not, not that it's encouraged. It's not encouraged. It's just accepted. That's what they do. So, um, not a lot of youth in this wedding were drinking because they hung out with more conservative Amish people, uh, Clinton crowd more so. But my brother and my sister's boyfriend and. They were there, they had a few beers. So we went over and I had a beer with them and a few of my other married brothers. Uh, no no drunkenness at this wedding, although it does happen. I don't think anybody was drunk that I know of. Uh, if somebody would have been, it would, would have probably been my brother Mark and my sister Leah, but Mark had a football game after, so he I doubt he was drinking. Uh, but yeah, so there, yeah, I think a lot of times they'll have some wine on the, on the bridal table and sometimes you know punches serve we did they didn't have punch last night usually a lot of times they'll serve punch and sometimes they'll put a little bit in there they have to be careful though because the kids end up drinking it so happy chicken says that looks like the wedding cake i had at my wedding oh interesting yeah very simple but nice i like it i don't like too busy i like the simple so karen says it looks good karen is a member shout out to you Having such a tight knit community and so precious these days. I know, yeah, Alexander. Yeah, it's communities everything nowadays. We need to find ways to start building community. We just need to. Tracy says beautiful. Shadow says beautiful. She did a good job. Yeah, she did. She's yeah. Her and my uh, two. Uh, yeah, they're most Amish women are style. It's all about that. Like you'll go to these newlyweds houses and it's the latest fashions. I'm telling you. Where they get the info, they might go up to the library and find the latest, latest fashions online. I'm not sure, but their houses are up to date. Uh, my sister, <laughs> they're moving into a rental for now until they find something to buy. And she's she's very discouraged because it's full of old wallpaper. <laughs> but yeah, it'll work for now. I ate it. Das, uh, Robert says I ate it. The Essen House Thursday, good food, but I don't see much that is Amish specific. It's more like American comfort food. Yeah, yep. You know, and honestly, I've been kind of disappointed in Blue Gate and Essen House when I've been there. Like, I don't know if the food's just declined or if um, if I'm just getting used to it and spoiled. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. TJS is their music. So there is... No music with instruments, but man, can some of those people sing. So all hymns, uh, a hymn is sung at the lunch table while the servers are getting the dishes filled. And then at the seven o'clock meal, and I think 5.30, they might sing another song while the food is being filled. The seven o'clock meal, another song is sung while they're filling the food and then after everybody's done eating they will sing four four five songs they probably did six or seven last night and then while they're singing people will start walking up to the bride and groom shake their hands and leave uh, that is also seven o'clock youth that is usually when he gets a chunk of change the the groom 
Um, what the men will do is they'll come up and shake hands with the, the bride and then the groom. And in that hand is a $20 bill or whatever they want to give. And they just shake hands. The 20 drops to the table. The groom takes care of it. I don't know why they do it that way. It's just always been. So that's the wedding gift. I don't know if it's 20 bucks, 30, 40, whatever it is now. I don't know. But yeah, this, this is all happening while they sing. The Amish do not have instruments. Some might have instruments. I shouldn't say that. But they don't publicly play instruments in public Amish events. But they can sing. Some of the, We had some beautiful singing last night. It's, uh, his family, it must be his. Our, my family isn't that great at singing. But uh, his family must have been because it sounded good. Hymns. Some, it's a few in German, but mostly in English. Uh oh. Um. I just lost it here. Right there we go. This is awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for joining us, Jamie. The Amish potato drivers get fed too. Generally, I heard guests often wrap the gifts in towels to help the couple with their startup. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that happens quite a bit. So they will wrap gifts in bath towels. Uh. It's just, just another way of giving another gift, so they have more to start. Yep. Um, the bridal table used to be in the corner called Eck. Yep, so yeah, that is what they call it. It's the Eck, Eck dish, Eck table. <laughs> uh, I just don't know how to say that in English. So, um, Shiloh loves ham. It was good ham. If there's music, is it Amish like hymns or country? It's hymns, definitely hymns. Although, you know what? The one song they sang was, uh, <laughs> my family all got in. That's a radio song. Lauren Diagle, my wife said Lauren Diagel sang it. So I don't know if it's her she wrote or if she was redoing a old hymn or something. But it was definitely sung like the radio version of it. Um, condolence and prayers for Grandma. Yeah, we hope she's in a better place. Thank you, Melanie. We appreciate that. It's probably going to sink in for my mom now. It was her mom. She took care of her. Uh, so she she passed away with all this going on. So now, today, it's over. And now people aren't going to be coming around. It's not going to be busy. And now it's probably going to be a struggle for my mom. So yeah, prayers for my mom. Yep, Amish weddings cost a lot. Hey, Anna Wingard, also a member. member. Shout out to you. You got the washing machine. And then we had a Bible study the other night with a question that asked, one cannot be saved if he remains a babe in Christ. Thoughts. One cannot be saved if he remains a babe in Christ. Hmm. I'd have to ask you some more questions on that, Daryl. Um, I'm not sure what they mean by babe in Christ. That's very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, elaborate on that, if you will. So maybe before, oh, let's keep going with these. Thank you for sharing. Very beautiful. Oh, thank you, Larry. Lee Artie, 58. Not sure how to pronounce your name. I apologize. I got my tablet. See the oh, I see. That's why you're watching two videos. Yep. That is insane. Wedding crashes. I know, right? Uh, sounds illegal. The drinking, the punch. Yeah, it, might, it probably is. <laughs> yeah, they're just, they're left alone. Oh, yeah. Do you have the tradition where guests hit their glass and then the wedding couple has to kiss? Yes, we do. Um, thank you for bringing that up because they refused to. We were tinkling forever. Everybody else quit doing it because they gave up. They refused to kiss. Me and a few of my brothers kept going because we weren't going to back down from Perry. Our brother-in-law probably shouldn't have mentioned his name, but uh, he is a stubborn one. And we're going to get into that a little bit, too. He's, he's, you know, me and my brothers, we kind of give each other a lot of crap. Uh, we, we josh on each other a lot and he fits right in. He's, he's gotten the upper hand a few too many times. Our new brother-in-law. Um, what we do? It's called ambrosia. I'm not sure what that means. I wonder if Rhonda Yoder did the flowers. She posted some beautiful pictures of a wedding. Oh, I don't know. Does, does she... I wonder if I know Rhonda Yoder, if it's the one I'm thinking. Does she do flowers? Yeah, I'm not sure. 
I know my other sister did from the guy here in Stur uh, the person who bogged flowers here in Sturgis, and she was disappointed. She was almost in tears, disappointed. Just not what she wanted. I think some of them were fake. I don't know. I don't know if there was a miscommunication there or something. I love to experience an Amish wedding. Who gets what is left over from the food? Do they decide it? Uh, yeah, so it's just handed out. Whoever's there last helping put everything away gets leftovers. We have a ton in the fridge. Um, do they divide it up? Yeah. So, yeah, they just, the kids usually, the, sis, the family gets some to take home and, and the neighbors who are there helping the church. Yeah. Uh, Robert says, uh, I have an Austrian friend who wants to visit in May, wondering if he could try to talk to you in Pennsylvania Dutch or maybe one of your family if you're not living around here. Well, we're still around here, but yeah, he, yeah, for sure. I mean, we could, yeah, I'm up for it. Um, you know, Robert, it, honestly, I need to do a video on it, but it, I bet if you just random, randomly stopped into a farm where somebody's out working and started chatting with them, it depends, you know, Amish people are human. Some are a little standoffish, others are very friendly, but just try a couple Amish people and you might you might enjoy that very much. What is an Amish rental like? Rental, I'm not sure what you mean. Like the cook wagon and stuff? Uh, I watched an Amish wedding on YouTube before. I don't remember what channel now, but it was really cool. Yeah, I wish I could get footage. I just, I, maybe I could, but it'd be frowned upon, Karen. I don't know. Heaven has a new angel to watch over you. Thank you, Melanie. Yep, yep, she is dancing and rejoicing. So the chair thing, are we out of the, she, yeah, what is the chair thing? Hey, how are you again? Hey, Rollin, how are you doing? There you go, hello from Seneca, South Carolina. Are we friends on Facebook? I'm not sure. I don't know if, you, if I'm not familiar, yeah. Hey, Mary Yoder from Seneca. Hey, Karen. <laughs> so anyone who accepts Christ for salvation is saved eternally at that moment, no matter what stage of growth. That's what I would say. But I, yeah, I don't know what they mean by a babe in Christ. Once you're saved, you're saved. Um, you know, the thief on the cross, uh, he was, from what I understand, he was making fun of Jesus. He was like, oh, yeah, if you're, you know, hey, what, if you're really God, if you're who, who you say you are, then... Why aren't you getting yourself down from here and all that stuff? But in the end, he said, remember me. And Jesus said, uh, today you will be with me in heaven. That's all. That's it. He said, remember me. When you get, it says, remember me. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't, now I can't remember the words, so I don't want to mess it up. But he, the, the thief said, remember me. He told Jesus, remember me. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. No works, nothing, just Belief and faith. That's it. He just believed Jesus was God and did, you know, he saw what he did. So, yep, I agree, Sue Brown. Yep. So if that's what they're talking about, babes in Christ, I, yeah, I just didn't know what the definition was. According to Wikipedia, ek is intended to mean the Holy Spirit and ekinar means co-worker with God. I don't know if that's the same thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I think... I think why they call it the ek dish is because usually couples had, <clears throat> instead of being out in the open in the middle of a wall like they my sister was, they would put them in, they would, the, the weddings used to be smaller and in houses. <clears throat> so the couple, the, the bride and groom would pick a, a corner of the house where they would have their table. And that's, I think, why it's called the ek dish because the ek is corner in Pennsylvania Dutch. Hello from Lexington. Hey, Kentuckian. Brandon, how are you? Do the Amish have a version of a wedding registry a listing in stores or on Amazon? Of what, what? Nope, they just, people just know what they're going to need. <laughs> Amish need all the same tools. So, I was sorry I was late to watch this live stream. What happened in your encounter with your Amish bishop at your grandma's funeral? Oh, you'll have to go watch the other live stream. So, that's not this one, but that's the last one. So I apologize. I should have taken that video down. Uh, two thieves, one who was complaining, the other chastised the first one and then said, oh, okay, yep, thank you, Lisa. Thanks for clearing that up. It's been a while since I've been in that story. In Christ means that you are born again, joined with Christ. You move from being in Adam to being in Christ. Growth continues at different rates with different people. Okay, yeah, so babes in Christ. So that, that just means that you're a new person in Christ. 
uh, from if that's what that means, then I, I would say babes in Christ can't go to heaven. I would, I would say then they're basing their salvation on works. I, I don't know. I don't see any other option. And that's a false doctrine uh, for sure. Cause, cause you, you, if, if you're a babe in Christ and you can't go to heaven because you haven't proved yourself yet, is that, is that what it is? Like I, yeah, that's no good. That's a false doctrine because it's not, it's not our performance. It's the righteousness of Christ that gets us to heaven. Only him. We're, we'll, we'll never be good enough. We'll never, our works will never be good enough, ever. Our works are like filthy rags, right? So anyway, let's get into the story of this chair. It's already 54 minutes in. Wow. You guys need to tell me to just shut up and get to it. This chair. Right there. Odd looking chair. <laughs> it is very clearly two chairs, two chairs uh, screwed together and the back manipulated to be one back. So, my now brother-in-law, he can shoot the breeze. He can, he can talk big just like us brothers. You know, we, we brothers, we always like acting like we're tough. You know, if, if one guy says, my coffee's so strong that when I put the spoon in to stir it, it just bends. The next brother, you know, will pop up. Well, pff, my, my coffee, I drink my coffee so strong that when I put the spoon in, it just dissolves. You know, and then, and then, and then somebody else will say, well, or I would have said, you know, well, when I lived in Idaho, I would go out and milk rattlesnakes of their venom as creamer for my coffee. You know, so we're always trying to top each other off just trying to be better and bigger than the other person and um you know it's, it's come to the point where when we go camping or something together that if you sleep on a mat an air mat or some kind of form of mattress you get made fun of uh, matter of fact we brag about collecting rocks to sleep on rocks because <laughs> we're so tough right um another thing is my one brother my younger brother who took a dip this morning He's, he's always about the wide hips and the broad, the, he, he claims he has the broad shoulders and the narrow hips. And he was telling the, the groom, you know, you with your wide hips and your narrow shoulders. <laughs> uh, yeah, just giving him crap about that. He's, my brother has told me one time that we should probably sit together at the wedding because my wide hips and narrow shoulders would fit perfectly next to his wide shoulders and narrow hips. And we would just, you know, it would save room. <laughs> I didn't have a comeback. I got it. That was pretty good. But so he was giving the groom crap about this, just joking around. Now, mind you, the groom is probably more physically fit than any of us, our new brother-in-law. But they were going back and forth. So the day before the wedding, my brother... Um, built this chair. He built this chair to accommodate the groom's wide hips and narrow shoulders, just as an insult, right? And, and on that chair, I had to go pick it up, and um, while they were at the church, I put it back. I removed his chair from the bridal table, and I put this chair there, just helping my brother out. On that chair was this note. His last name isn't Higgins. Uh, we have all. We also have this thing with the Sackets and the Higgins. Sackets are fictional characters. Um, Lou Lamore writes about them in his fictional books. They are tough as nails. They are family. They're a clan. They're super tough. And uh, their enemies are the Higginses. Started by my other brother. This little thing we have going on. So we claim we are sackets and anybody who is weak in any way any man who is weak in any way is a higgins so i blocked out his first name there but his last name is not higgins now amish comedy amish humor might be a little simple to for some people but um they it's funny it's yeah it's inside jokes and stuff so you know um everybody was laughing about this chair cuz they knew what was going on 
but I had, so while they were over, I, I didn't, I didn't stay at the church part of the wedding for very, I was only over there for a little bit. So while they were over there, I removed his chair from the bridal table. I put this chair there. And then, so that was waiting for him when he got back from the church, the wedding, be, being married. And he walked up there and he saw it and he just lost it. Like, yeah, he was just, he knew he had been had. Um, and obviously everybody else wants to know the story and was laughing about it. This often happens at weddings. Um, a lot of times if, the person, the bride or the groom has done something embarrassing in their past. A family member will remind them of it, remind everybody in the community of it by putting something in their eck <laughs> or the, the bridal table area, whatever. You know, my other brother-in-law, uh, they had been camping one time and uh, his buddies decided that, oh, he went to take a shower and his buddies decided they're going to take his clothes. So they took, took his clothes. So he was in the shower. So he had to, he, <laughs> they, they went back to camp with his clothes and all of a sudden he comes running back there with a clear shower curtain wrapped around him because he had nothing else. <laughs> so in his wedding, there was a clear shower curtain hung above his chair. Just, yeah, that's just kind of a joke they sometimes play. I don't know if this is every community, but uh, this is, this happens in this community. Um, anyway, so that's the whole chair deal. It looks weird. It was funny. It, it was, it was hilarious at the wedding. You probably have to be there to understand that, uh, more of a lot of this joking goes on in the Amish community. It's, this one anyway, I don't know about the other ones, but I'm assuming it's similar in other ones. So. Um, let me back up here. So we're back in Christ and Boy. Yeah, so got it. Uh, wife want to know about a wedding ring quilt. Mm. So I don't know. I've never heard of a wedding ring quilt. I don't know. Does my wife? Yeah, explain to us, John. I guess. So they don't have wedding rings. Amish don't do wedding rings, and this community doesn't do anything with quilts a whole lot anymore. But I don't know what a wedding wedding ring quilt is. Hmm. It's good to see you here, though, John. You'll forever be my friend for the info you gave me on the van. Very knowledgeable. Which we sold now. But Brandon Asma, live in Lexington. Okay, Doug, are you Sharon? Thank you, Karen. Um, there are Christian groups that believe you can lose your salvation. Forgot the name. Yeah, there are. Um, unfortunately, I just, yeah, I don't hold with that. I don't think you can. Because um, John 6, John 10. Yeah, I don't think, think you can. Some, some say you can walk away. You can choose to walk away. Uh, I question that as well. I, I don't know. I don't, I, don't underst I don't see how you can walk away. I don't understand how you can be saved, truly saved, and experience or, or be transformed, right? Because we're transformed and then choose to walk away. I, I don't see that. I'm not an expert, though. Not a Bible expert. I would say if you walk away from the faith bit being saved, then you were never saved to begin with. But who am I to judge? I don't know. I'm glad I'm not the one who judges salvation for people. Does the bride have a wedding shower? I do think they do nowadays. They used to not. I think they I think they do. Wait, wedding shower? Yeah, I think yeah. Um, sometimes. It, it, it's kind of a it's coming in. Amish tr kind of follow the trends of the non-Amish. It's just usually years behind. So who's the Sackets? I think I explained that. Just fictional characters in Lily Moore books. Tough fictional characters, and we're some of them. So thank you, Karen. Oh, the wedding ring quilt. So this is the quilt pattern, apparently. So... Yep, Sue Brown, works can't save us, so why would anyone believe works could keep us saved? Makes no sense. Yeah, exactly. Like we, yeah, I don't know. Um, the, the thing is, I think a lot of it comes with, like the Amish believe that you can't know whether you're saved or not. You can't know for sure that when you die, well, if you go to heaven, you can't know for sure that. That's what they believe. But that's a, 
and I hope I hope there's allowance for that. Like that's knowing when you die that you're going to go to heaven changes everything. That changes everything. It, it, there's that's that's self. I mean that's salvation, right? <laughs> um, John five twenty four. You are no longer under judgment. You now have eternal life. That's paraphrasing. Um, John. John 3, 16, 17, 18, you are no, yeah, you are no longer under condemnation, but have eternal life. It, you know, so, so we can know in John 5, 13, these things are written so that you may know you have eternal life. Like, I don't know how they skip that part of the Bible. Like, we can know when we die that we will have eternal life, that we will be, uh, we will enter the new creation, I mean, we will be with, yeah, Christ, we'll, heaven right and the new creation so uh if you if you say you can't know for sure if you're going to heaven or hell or that you don't know where if you're saved or not for sure like what has to happen to make sure that you are like what is it just a chance like oh well i think i'm gonna be saved but i don't know it's up to jesus um, so hopefully, hopefully I can be, I should probably, I should probably live a good enough life so that he'll pick me and won't send me to hell. Right. So what's that doing now? Now you're making sure you're living a good enough life to get to heaven, which is works. You'll never be good enough or lead a good enough life. So I really struggle with. I really struggle with thinking people who don't know if they're going to go to heaven or hell if they're saved. Some people say, oh, well, yeah, they just don't know. That might be so, but I just really struggle. I hope so. I really hope that Amish people go to heaven, even though they don't know that you can know you're saved. I just really struggle with the idea that if, if you're still not 100, if you don't know, for sure. Um, how can you f fully have faith in Christ and his righteousness? Like how, it just seems like that you're not fully putting your faith in Christ because you're, you're yeah. <laughs> I'm fully putting faith in Christ that he's, he's saving me. Like that's my only chance. It's all on him. You know, I guess. It, it, I, if I end up in hell, I'm going to be thinking, well, okay, man, I, wow, all right, I got kind of, maybe I misunderstood the Bible wrong, or I got misled, but that's not that's not going to happen. Like, I, I'd be mad. <laughs> like, what's going on? You said, that it, your word says I'll be saved, right? I'll be, believe in me and put your faith in me, and you'll, you know, you'll have eternal life. And I'd be like, come on, what, what happened? But... I'm probably confusing a lot of people. So I, I really struggle with the idea that you can be saved and not believe that you have eternal life and not know that you have eternal life. Correct me if I'm wrong, I guess, but I just, you know, I'm not the expert here. I'm not, I'm not a pastor material. I'm not, it's just, that's what I, that's what's going on in my head. I helped my Mennonite friend make a quilt before her wedding. Sounded like she was supposed to make a quilt before she got married. Yeah, that that possibly. I think some communities might do that stuff. This one, not so much. They're kind of modern. So here in Canada, brides have bridal showers and the grooms have stag parties. Yeah, so there. I think there's bridal showers and the grooms. Um, I don't. They don't. I don't know what a stag party is, but they wouldn't do the bachelor party. They might. Yeah, they do do bachelor parties, but it's not like they don't hire strippers or anything like the movies. You know. Or I hope not. <laughs> they definitely, not Amish people, nope. So you can't lose your salvation. Agreed. Uh, if you could, Christ would need to come back and be crucified again. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. He came to fulfill the will of God. And I, and if you lose your salvation, have you not failed? Has he, or has he not failed the will of God? According to John 6, John 10, yeah. So, Sometimes after you save, the energy slips in with doubt of your salvation, especially those saved at an early age. I haven't had these concerns, but my friends have. Yeah, and I understand that. But that's different than what 
Uh, that's a different than what Amish believe. So Amish believe it's prideful to think that you're sure you're going to heaven. Like I've told them, I know I'm going to heaven. I know, I know when I die, I'll be with Christ. Um, and they think it's prideful and that I'm being cocky and too sure of myself and I could fall off the wagon. So they would believe you can lose your salvation. Yeah, so that's another thing. Can someone be saved and believe they, you can lose your salvation? I don't know. I struggle seeing that, but unfortunately. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. Anyway, let's get out of here. Uh, that was the Amish wedding. <laughs> Hopefully you guys got a glimpse of all of that. Uh, yeah, it has been over an hour, and I'm going to go eat dinner with my wife. Um, maybe have a date since we don't have Miranda. We will see you guys next time. Thank you guys all for joining. I appreciate you guys here. It's fun hanging out with you guys. Fun chatting with you guys. Um, I, I almost can't turn away from the comments long enough to shut it off. You lose rewards, not so much. Yeah, exactly, Sue Brown. Yep. You, you, yeah. I wonder what church you go to. But yeah, so, yeah, we will all be judged according to our works. But that salvation has already, already been taken care of. So, yep. Spark, Robert Sparkman, yeah, let, let me, you know, I, yeah, if I'm not too busy, which oftentimes I am, but if your friend comes in um, and, yeah, he wants to chat in Pennsylvania Dutch, we can try. I don't know how that will go. Hopefully he can speak English. But uh, I don't like bugging my parents or bringing strangers to my parents too much because they just, they have a life. But honestly, honestly, if you guys are in an Amish community and you see somebody working out in the field or out in the garden, go stop in and talk to them. Just start asking questions. I need to do a video on how to handle it. Just start asking questions. Don't, don't talk scripture. Don't just stay away from that. Don't ask them questions about their belief. You can mention that you're a Christian, whatever, and they'll be like, Oh, cool. But just ask them questions about their life and their thoughts and just let them talk. Don't. Yeah. Um, if you're a man, I wouldn't approach a woman. Uh, not that the Amish have anything against that. I mean, you can you can approach her, but don't. Um, if a man is out, a husband is out in the field, and you're you're a man, and you don't don't be hanging out in the washing room or the where she's washing clothes and just chatting with her. You know, just uh, it's just not appropriate. Men should go to the men as much as possible, and women should go to the women. Uh, just how it is. Yeah. So. But don't be afraid. Like, they're just people. Um, once again, you know, some might not be as receiving as others or not open as others, but it is what it is. You know, we were, there was some H Hillsborough, uh, families there from Hillsborough, and I think they knew that I was, used to, I grew up Amish. Um, and they wouldn't acknowledge me at all. They wouldn't take anything from me. You know, I, I just cleaning up I handed a candy bar to one of their kids. It was just laying there. I figured, oh, he, I'm sure he would love a candy bar, so I just reached over and handed it to him and he was backed away you know and later I was uh, talking to um, the groom's father and uh, the family came up started shaking hands with him and they just completely <laughs> um, and that's okay I don't care they have their beliefs and that's fine like, I don't hold that against them um, I, I, I heard a little bit about the families and you know in some ways I, I envy them not envy, but respect them for the way they chose to live, choose to live. Uh, if you know, in a in a in a in a traditional way, not in a religious or not in a biblical way, but Karen said, "I've heard it both ways be backed by Scripture, but I leave those matters up to God." Yeah, I don't know that Scripture would back. If, if there's scripture saying you can lose your salvation, then there's some contradictions, I would say. But once again, I'm not the expert, so Robert Sparkman would know more. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll see you guys later. You guys have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you next week. I'm CJ. This is the Amish Potato. I'm putting up a picture of Lacey as I sign off of here.